Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for January 4th, 2018. So I'm excited about this year already. Uh, I wish every message could be like yesterday's message where I was basically preaching. But I do want to do some systematic teaching. And so I was asking God about teaching on prayer and fasting. I've taught a lot on prayer over the years, but I really haven't done a lot of teaching on fasting. And so as we, you know, as I teach, we have to be led of God in all things. I asked God if it was okay if I could teach a series on prayer and fasting, and he gave me the green light, and I'm excited about it. So under the banner of expectation for this year, I must teach a series that starts today entitled The Benefits of Prayer and Fasting. So I'm excited, uh, and just let's, let's get started. So I'm going to start with Jesus. That's a good place to start. Now, let's think about Jesus for a minute. He was God. He was God in the flesh, but he really lived as a man. He didn't live as a God in the earth because if he did, then he wouldn't really be an example for us or of us. No, he lived as a man who was possessed by God so that we can follow that example because we are also men once we're born again and women that are possessed by God. So growing up, he knew that he was the son of God, but he waited on he had the discipline to wait on the right time. And we can learn from Jesus. He waited 30 years for a three and a half year ministry. He waited 30 years, some scholars believe, because priests, it was um, Numbers 4 you could look at and there's other places. Uh, priests in, in Jesus' day couldn't start operating as a priest until they were 30 years old. And Jesus was our high priest. So he waited until he was 30. When he was 30 years old, he went and he got baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And at the baptism, it was a supernatural event where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all present at the baptism. The, the Son was baptized, the Father spoke, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like in the form of a dove. And after Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, the very first act that Jesus performed, being led of the Holy Spirit, was to fast, was to go on a 40-day fast. I'm going to read to you what the Bible says. You can find this in Luke 4 and also in, in Matthew 4. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll really kind of deal with this passage more in the days to come. I'm just kind of laying a foundation for today. But the Bible says Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan, the Jordan River where he was baptized, and was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He was tempted by the devil for 40 days, and he ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. Now, he was still a man, right? So he didn't eat anything for 40 days, so he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, I mean, the devil is always going to question your identity. But he says, listen, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered. Jesus actually quoted Deuteronomy, and I'll deal with that tomorrow. But Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I really want to talk about that, but I'm not going to really talk about that until tomorrow. All right. So for today, what does this mean to you today? Uh, because I'm just introducing, you know, prayer, prayer and fasting. Really, I'm dealing with fasting today. But as we go through the series, I'll deal with fasting and prayer, prayer and fasting, because you got to do both, right? If you're fasting right now, there's a lot of churches that kind of do uh, fast in January, the 30 days or 21 days. My, my church is doing a 30 day fast. And so if you're fasting right now and you're not praying, then you're not really fasting. You're just going without eating. <laughs> For you to fast, you need to fast and pray. Fasting and prayer go hand in hand, right? And so, so you got to fast and you got to pray and I'll teach on both. But as, as it relates to today, to lay the foundation, I have five things to share with you uh, and I believe that these will be a blessing to you so we can set a foundation for this series. And I trust that you'll be, get excited about learning about fasting and prayer, prayer and fasting. Here's the five things for today. Number one, fasting is clearly a New Testament practice. Now, you know, there's always this discussion around Old Testament, New Testament. Is this for today? Is this something that I should be doing? Well, obviously this one, uh, there shouldn't be a lot of debate about this one. Fasting is clearly New Testament. First of all, Jesus fasted in the New Testament. <laughs> and then he also said this in Matthew chapter six, he says he was talking to his disciples and he said, when you fast, he didn't say if you fast, he didn't say, uh, uh, you know, whether or not you should fast, he expected them to fast. And by proxy, he expects us to fast. He said, when you fast as a born again, believer, New Testament, 
we should fast. Fasting should be part of our life, should be, should be part of our routine, should be part of our experience walking with God, that we actually sacrifice some things uh, to, to, to humble ourselves, to still ourselves, to be able to hear from God more clearly. Number two, fasting pleases God. See, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit led Jesus to fast. Now, the Holy Spirit would never lead you to do something that is not pleasing to the Father. So the Holy Spirit led Jesus to fast. That means that fasting is pleasing to the Father. If we are led of the Holy Spirit, then he will lead us concerning when to fast and how to fast. There's different types of fast, and, and I may deal with that in this series as well. But he will lead you concerning when to fast, uh, what to fast from, that kind of thing. All right. Number three, prior to being born again, you were, I was, a natural being, natural to this world looking for spiritual experiences. So we were a natural being, we completely natural, not spiritual at all, and we were looking for spiritual experiences. We were pursuing spiritual experiences. We had a yearning for the things of the spirit. Some people dibble and dabble in dark spirits, right? Some people, of course, pursue God, and who is light. But at the end of the day, many natural beings are pursuing some type of spiritual experience. But once we're born again, God's spirit comes and lives, takes up residence inside of us. At that moment, we're no longer just natural beings to this world. We're born again. And the supernatural is supposed to be natural to us. So once we're born again, we are a spirit being. We are spiritual beings. And then at that point, we are spiritual beings that are having both spiritual and natural experiences in this world. So you still have natural experiences in this world, things that are natural to this world, but you're also having spirit experiences. You're having spiritual encounters with God. So you, you are now a spirit being if you're born again, and you're having spiritual encounters with God. You're also having natural encounters with the things of this world and the people of this world. But fasting, what fasting does then is, is watch. While when you are fasting, the Holy Spirit will lead you to have a spiritual experience with God. And at the same time, your natural body is going to urge you to eat. So fasting gives you an opportunity to, to tee up uh, some training. So you are a spiritual being now and you're living in a natural body, a physical body. And so what fasting does, it does it's not really about God, it's really about you. What fasting does is give you an opportunity to train. Because when you're fasting, the Holy Spirit is going to be leading you towards the things of God and your natural body is going to be saying, I want a sandwich. I'm hungry. Give me them, you know, whatever. And so at that moment, you have an opportunity because your soul has to decide. Here you have your spirit. Here you have your body and your soul gets to decide. And in your soul, your, where your mind, your emotions and your will are, your thinker, your feeler, your chooser, the way you, you know, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you make decisions, your soul then has to decide, am I going to be led of the spirit or am I just going to submit to the flesh and the urges of the flesh? And it's very important to kind of teach yourself how to win this internal battle. See, fasting helps you to train your body to submit to your spirit because there is an internal battle between the leading of the spirit and the urges of the natural body. And fasting helps you to win that battle. Number four. Number four lines up with number three, and it's very important. Let me say it this way. So a, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, I posted something on social media that relates to what I just said. Um, and so I was let somebody, one of my friends on Facebook, shared it yesterday, shared what I said years ago yesterday. And she got a lot of comments about it because it was, it's pretty funny what I said, but it really lines up with what I'm teaching now. So I'm going to repeat it. So this is what I said back then that pertains to what I'm saying now. Fasting is not really about resisting a tuna sandwich or plate of cookies. Fasting is about learning how to say no to the flesh. So your spirit is going this way, your flesh wants to go this way, it's how to say no to the flesh. So fasting is about learning how to say no to the flesh. When you train your flesh to obey your spirit and you can win the battle over a few cookies, then you won't lose the battle when the stakes are much higher. Like when that man, women, look at me for a minute, women, like when that man who is not your husband tries to get your cookies. <laughs> He's trying to get you to give up your cookies. Now, I said that in a joking way, tongue in cheek, kind of funny, but the point is this. 
If you can't win the battle over a sandwich, then you're going to lose the battle over real temptation, like sexual temptation, like the, the like pornography temptation. So so if you can't win the battle over something that simple, then you're going to lose the battle when the stakes are much higher. So fasting, what it does, it gives you an opportunity to train your soul to choose your spirit over the urges of your flesh. All right. Number five. And finally, man, this series is going to be good. Jesus was tempted while he fasted. If Jesus was tempted, then you can rest assured that you're going to be tempted as well. Jesus responded to every temptation with the word of God. And this is how we should respond. And this is really what I want to talk about tomorrow. So I'm going to end with that point. I just laid the foundation for the benefits of prayer and fasting on today. I trust that you get excited about this series. Even if you're not fasting right now, even if you never fasted, then please continue to tune in so you can learn what the Bible says about prayer and fasting. All right, let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this, say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. My time of harvest is now. I prepare myself to receive supernatural harvest in this season. Part of my preparation is to train my soul to choose the leading of the Holy Spirit over the temptations of the flesh. This is why I fast. Fasting does not move you, Father. Fasting moves me. Fasting prepares me to become the man you birthed me to be. So I fast and pray. I submit to you in all things. I am led of your spirit. I fill my heart with your word and I expect to experience your best in 2018. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up to get the messages. There's a big subscribe button there. Subscribe, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. And before you leave this screen, please share this on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. Head into this day. Determine whether you're fasting right now or not that you're going to live a fasted life. If you are fasting, then fast. If you're not still, you need to pray. Fast and pray and experience God's best. God bless you.